Welcome to the ETF education series brought to you by ASX, BetaShares and Comsec. I am Jacinta King, Business Development Manager, Investment Products at ASX, and I'm joined in studio by Cameron Gleeson from BetaShares. He's a Senior Investment Strategist and Ryan Felsman from Comsec, where he is a Senior Economist. Welcome, Thanks gentlemen. Jacinta. Thank Good you very much. Cam. Good to see you, Ryan. Now, this is the second of four series where we are discussing exchange traded funds or ETFs as they are sometimes referred to. And in this episode, we'll take a deep dive into ETF investment strategies and diversification. So Cameron, how can ETFs help investors diversify? Yeah, so there is over 300 different ETFs available in Australia and they cover all the major asset classes like Australian equities, international equities, fixed income and cash. And you can get really good sort of diversified exposure across those asset classes. There's also you know, numerous ETFs that provide more targeted exposure. So for example, specific countries to sectors, mm -hmm. to investment themes, currencies, even commodities. Um, and within each of those asset classes, you'll often find a choice of multiple ETFs. So if I wanted low cost diversified Australian equity exposure, I can choose between perhaps four or five different ETFs from different ETF providers within that particular space. So for example, BetaShares offers the BetaShares Australia 200 ETF. Mm. Within fixed income, I could choose a, an ETF that provides diversified exposure to both government and, and corporate bonds, or perhaps a more targeted exposure for an ETF that maybe only holds government bonds, or for example, floating rate notes. So a range of different exposures across different asset classes. And then of course, ETFs, you know, come in two different flavors in terms of the way they, they have, you know, their strategy actually works. So we have index tracking ETFs, which will follow a rules-based approach to investing in a portfolio of stocks and aim to emulate the performance of that index at very low cost. But we also have actively managed ETFs where you have a portfolio manager making subjective decisions mm. and trying to outperform a benchmark or an index. So, you know, ultimately this broad choice means that Australian investors can build diversified portfolios, cover all the major asset classes, and they can do so you know, in a really easy manner by buying and selling ETFs that are available on the ASX. Hmm. Thank you. So investors should think about asset classes, industry sectors, and geographic regions. Can you break those down for us? Well, certainly. So Jacinta, if you look at different asset classes, you've got cash, you've got bonds, you've got shares, property, and commodities. They all have different risk and return characteristics. And on the back of that, they tend to perform differently at different times over the cycle. And of course, that performance can be uncorrelated across asset classes. So we have certainly investors focused on what could be defensive or low risk asset classes. So they tend to be cash, bonds and property and sometimes gold. And they tend to perform very well in economic slowdowns or when there's bouts of market volatility. But also at the same time, we have situations where commodities, which is more of a growth orientated or, or risk orientated asset class, they could come under pressure when you see an economic slowdown, commodity prices fall. And of course, those growth assets have higher expected returns, uh, but certainly at the same time, there's greater risk of losing money when it comes to these investments. So Cameron, given the information that Ryan's provided there for us, uh, how might investor take that information to build a portfolio? Yeah, so look, every investor is different in terms of you know their their requirements for building a portfolio. But thinking about the the points that Ryan made about about growth assets and defensive assets, for most investors they'll look to use a blend of those asset classes to build a portfolio. So within growth assets, Australian equities, global equities, uh, within the defensive assets, bonds, potentially gold or cash, and you are looking to take advantage of that free lunch of diversification. The primary you know objective with building diversified core portfolio isn't necessarily outperformance. It's about maximizing your total expected return for the level of risk or volatility that I as an investor can tolerate through the market cycle in good times and bad. So you know, the secret to wealth creation is ensuring that you're regularly investing in the market over the market cycle. And you know, too often we see new investors come to the market, you know, try and pick their favorite stocks, try and pick mm -hmm. some winners. Um, and look, that approach is okay if you're doing that for part of your portfolio. We call that a satellite approach if you allocate part of your capital to generating out performance. But we want to see that paired alongside a core, a larger core. Because if you are trying to drive out performance through your entire portfolio, trying to time markets and not taking advantage of diversification, then the markets will turn against you at some point. And when they do, 
history shows that people tend to lose that investing discipline and stop regularly regularly comp- and contributing to their portfolio. Mm. So your call's there to give you that level of comfort so you can continue to invest in the market over the cycle and, and build wealth. Um, in terms of using ETFs, look, it's really important when you're looking to use an ETF to understand what its role is in portfolios. Mm-hmm. Is it there as a core allocation? Is it there for capital gains, for income, for defense? Is it a satellite exposure? You want to drive out performance. If, for example, you wanted to get exposure to the global cybersecurity industry, you might look at an ETF like BetaShares Hack. Now, don't just stop at the ticker code and think that's a great ticker code. Do your research. Have a look at the stocks that are in that portfolio. ETFs are great in terms of the level of transparency that you have to be able to look under the hood to see the stocks in the portfolio, see performance. So I think fundamentally you need to do your homework. We shouldn't shy away from that. And you need to have a you know overall framework for investing and that's more likely to place you in a good position for having you know build long-term wealth and have success over the long term and periodic rebalancing is a factor as well absolutely i mean you you have that risk profile or you have that tolerance to risk rebalancing is really important to ensure that your portfolio doesn't become so we say too volatile Mm-hmm. in times of market stress because the asset alignments work to come out of balance. So ensuring that you're maintaining the, the overall profile of your portfolio over the market cycle is really important. And it also means that when a stock or when a particular asset class sells off and becomes cheaper, you're going to sell out of asset classes that have outperformed and buy the asset class which is cheap. So you have the ability to benefit from diversification in that way too. Mm-hmm. Look, thank you, Cameron and Ryan. Appreciate you taking your time to talk to us about uh, ETF uh, investment strategies and diversification. Thank you. Thank you.